He is praying for his divine glory as a man to testify that he is the son of God sent by God the Father to save humanity. When you read verse 2, oh, the honestly, issue of eternal oh, life oh, comes oh, into focus. You are You're missing debating the, the question for a reason yeah. because you You're know. The point. Let me he, help him you out. Know, no, no, he knows exactly what Let I'm asking. I'm going to throw him a bone because I'm the nice guy. Hashem is <laughs> so mean. Okay, here's the thing. What, here's the point that you're missing, William. If he was divine, if he was truly divine, he would never have to pray for glory. If he's praying as a human being, then it has no impact on his prayer or on his recollection or on his status as a divine being. So you're, you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Absolutely. That's the issue, man. It's, it's, a divine being would never have to pray for it. And if it's and a human, human asking to be glorified, that's human why will never ask for a divine glory. Right. I, that's why I asked you the question, can anybody else or can anything else be magnified, honored, or any other definition that you gave me according to your lexicon? You gave me the definition of magnification, honoring, elevation, and I think there was a fourth that I'm just missing. So the point is that if a human being can be elevated and if a human being can be given glory, then he's just given glory by God, which is fine. There's no issue with that. But the second that you cross over to a divine being, which is what you need in order for your doctrine to work, now you're running into the issue of a divine being lacking glory at any point in time. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I don't think I'm a stranger to you guys on this uh, platform. Am I? No problem. Yeah, no, not at all. Uh, where are you joining us from? South America. Beautiful South, South sorry, America. South, South America, no problem. I'll leave you in the capable hand of my friend Maurice. I'm just going to quickly pray and come back, yeah? No all problem. right, what's up, William? Nice to meet you, man. I, I haven't had a chance to speak with you yet if you talk to some of the other panelists. Um... Not at all. Absolutely. This is my first time. Oh, it's your first time. Oh, I thought you said you're familiar with the with that we're familiar with you. All right, man. Well, welcome. On welcome. on the chat. On the chat. In the chat. Oh, in the, the chat. chat. Not on video. This is my first oh, time. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. What what's on your mind, man? What what's up? Yeah, I've been listening um to you guys. I I've heard a lot of comments made um by I think it was a sheet you had before, if I'm not um wrong. And discussion about Christianity and some of the charges, some of the points, um, you know, about the, the rich Christians and so forth. So I thought it's interesting and, and I would like to give my part. Yeah, go I would ahead. like to answer some questions, especially on, on the divinity of Christ. Yeah. Okay. So what you got for us? Why do you, why well, do you I believe was, that? I was hoping. Uh -huh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead with a question. Yeah, you wanted to start with the divinity, right? So why do you why do you think that he's divine or did you is that what you wanted to discuss? Yeah, I I am a Christian. I, I believe in the Bible 100 percent It's the inspired word of God and, and it does say that Jesus Christ is God. It's unequiv unequivocal unequivocal, unambiguous. Okay. And which Bible are you reading? Um, I think your question should be which version am I reading? Is that what you're trying to imply? You can you can tell me a version or you can tell me the name, whatever you prefer. Several, several versions I, I've read. Um, I, I read, I consult, and there's no difference in what they say. Probably there's another version, but I don't want to get into that. Okay, no problem. Well, that's that was one of my fundamental things. Um as to why I believe that it's it can't be relied upon. So I think that anything that has an addition, alteration, or omission uh, really needs to be brought into question as to why that is, right? So um, I'll give you the credence and, and kind of give you the leeway as to why you think that, that Jesus is God. So where does he unequivocally state that he is God? Because uh, we have unequivocal, unambiguous <clears throat> statements on the contrary. So what What's kind of on your mind? Why do you think that he's he's claiming to be God? You want to give me one of your 
unambiguous statement to the contrary, and, and I could start working with that if it's okay with you. Yeah, sure. It's fine with me. So, I mean, you had mentioned the conversation that we had a little bit earlier and you had some commentaries on it. So why don't we just start with John 17, 3? That's okay with me. Okay. Um, every time you interpret the Bible, you interpret it in context, right? Okay. Um, the Bible has several genera and you yep. don't, you don't look at one verse as opposed to a chapter with 30 or 35. So John 17, 3 begins with John 17, 1, because 1 comes before 3, right? Um, if you read 1, and I have it here, Jesus is actually saying, or he's praying, let me just get it for you. And he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Now, this is very strange in the first place. Um, I'm not even getting to three right now. I'll start with one briefly. The mere fact that Jesus is asking God, the Father in heaven, to glorify him, Jesus, says a lot. Because like you guys rightly know, there's a verse in Isaiah that says, God will give his glory to no one, not even an idol or carved image. So here you have Jesus, a man in, in this capacity here, and he's asking God to glorify him. That rings a bell to me because if God does that, glorifies this man, then he'll be going against his word in Isaiah. He'll be lying, right? Okay. He will be lying. So if, if God, let me finish. If God is going to glorify Jesus, who is a man, no. Then it simply means that Jesus Sorry about that. We may have some questions about Jesus here, but in order for the verses to be divine, he cannot be a human, or else, or, or else he'll be in a form, he will be in the category of a human as well as a, a carved image. And you'll have to solve that riddle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you think that God can glorify prophets, or do you think that, you know, can anybody be glorified by God? Is that okay? I think what's no. happening, and this is if I'm understanding you, oh, you think God can't glorify prophets at all? He cannot glorify he? prophets. He said what? he will, it's, this is not about glorifying. This is about sharing his glory. It's a different thing. Sharing his glory. And his glory is his character. If you read Exodus 23, right? Mm -hmm. God doesn't share that. That resides with him. If, for example, God you would agree with me that God is omnipresent, he's omnipotent, he's omniscient. Those are yeah. his characteristics. He I shares with no one. Yeah, I don't think that... In I don't this, think in this case, to... he doesn't share his... Okay. I think there's probably like a small delay, so I'm going to try my best to, you know, be patient when we, when we talk to one another. I think there's just a connectivity delay. So I want to explore the concept of glory, right? So when you say that somebody is glorified, right? What's your understanding of when somebody is glorified? When somebody is glorified, I'm going to actually give you the Hebrew, the Greek word for it. Hold on, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I, I don't I don't need the Hebrew or the I, I'm trying to get your understanding. No, 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 no. I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to get I have to get references. I just can't speak out of my head or just say it for this reason of saying it. To render glorious, to honor, to magnify. Great. That is so what it to means. To honor and to magnify. Great. It's Fantastic. Okay. So at what magnify. point? Great. So at what point does that imply some form of divinity? If somebody were to be honored or if somebody were to be magnified, right? So let me let me kind of give you my understanding of it. If uh, if somebody were to be honored or magnified in the eyes of God, that means that they have reached a particular status, right? So there's something like um, um, a person being a good person and that they're honored in a position with God. Does that make sense? That is your understanding, but this goes no, beyond your a you simple just gave me human. That. You just hold it on, hold goes, on, hold on, bro. It goes Magnify, glorify, honor. honor. Right. And if, I have, if I could go to another right. verse, 
Jesus says, yes, let me bring in the honor. Let me bring in the honor. Let me bring in the honor. Jesus says, Jesus says, Jesus says that they may honor him as well as they honor the father. You understand? Okay. That is a claim of equality. That is a claim of equality. So the mere fact, whenever God is speaking in terms of his relationship with other gods, it is in the form of idols. Okay. All right. So, so you have to again, conclude. Um, you have to you have to be patient, right? Because it's a dialogue. You you have to be patient in what you're laying down. We're exploring the concept and your understanding of honoring and elevating, right? So uh let's just stick with that so when when jesus is being glorified and when he's being honored right explain to me your understanding of just that so if can any can any prophet be honored magnified or glorified by god based on the definition that you gave me any single prophet fits that criteria and i think what's happening is you're having a false equivocation and you're inserting your desire to want to elevate him to a divine status. I couldn't get your question uh, because of the, the feed, but I think you'll have to repeat no it. No problem. No problem. I'll try to repeat it. So I think what's happening is, is you're, you're falsely equivocating the glorification and the magnification with deification. And I don't think that that's an okay thing to do. I think what's happening is, is you're looking at it through a, a lens and that lens is because Jesus is divine and the Father is divine, therefore they are now equally glorified, right? But if we were to chop that viewpoint up, Jesus is asking for glorification, which means he doesn't have it originally. It means it has to be given to him. And then what you're doing is you're now coming on the back foot and saying, well, this is in his humanic or humanitarian or human state right in his non-divine state okay and i just i don't think that that's a very strong approach to it i think what's happening is you're just simply reading your own um you're doing an eisegesis of what you're wanting to see and you're not respecting the definition of the terms for what they need to be does that make sense to you no absolutely not um, i'll tell you why Okay. You are saying that I am defying Jesus. Quite the contrary. Quite the contrary. I am mm -hmm. saying that Jesus, as divine Son of God, became human, incarnate. All right? And you have to read Micah 5 2 to understand that concept. Who was to be born? Whose origin is from times eternal? That's Micah 5 2. Now, let's go back to the issue of glorifying. If I go to verse 5, all right? Follow me carefully. I'm going to verse 5 of John 17. It says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me. A repetition of verse 2, right? Mm -hmm. With thine own self. With mm -hmm. the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now, mm -hmm. if you are saying Jesus is a mere prophet, a good man, a servant of God, uh, which man do you know will have an existence before the creation of this world? My contention yeah, I, is, my exegesis mm -hmm. is, Allow me to finish my last sentence, and then you'll come in. My exegesis is God the Son became a human, meaning that divinity and humanity was combined in him. So there were times when his humanity was in focus, 100%. Mm -hmm. The guy ate, he slept, he did everything human, humans do. And then there were other times when his divinity was in focus so this is a mystery that we'll never understand now if you could understand everything about god he ceases to be god 
Okay. So again, this is the, it's the classic Christian narrative, right? And it's a mystery. And then you pick and choose on when there's a humanity and when there's a divinity. So if I were to ask you, uh, do you believe that Jesus was 100% man and 100% God at all times? Okay, great. So was he Absolutely. divine when he was a, when he was he divine when he was a baby? Absolutely, he was worshipped as a baby. Okay, so really, unless okay. the, unless those unless those um, wise men were were so worshipped. Okay, so so I have a couple questions for you. Then the first question that I have is: Was he suckling as a baby? Was he eating as a baby? And he was getting his he was getting you know cleaned up as a as a as a divine of baby. course really okay so <laughs> how is that possibly Absolutely. a form of divinity again how, how i'm is saying that a form of divinity? divinity would not be clean would, no no listen to me listen to me divinity would not be clean his divine nature would not be clean or fed etc that's god his humanity humanity will be like ours okay so can you give me that any type man, of reference have to where be he was worshipped as a baby can you give me any type of reference where he was worshipped as a baby or can you give me any type of documentation or anything like that that i could look at where it shows that he was worshipped Machu, as a baby in Machu, in Machu. i my documentation is is from the bible right and if you go to Machu chapter 3 Go ahead. I'm going to pull it up for myself. I'm not sure the feed is working too good here. It's it's very it's delayed. Yeah, Machu tree. Yeah. Sorry, it's not Machu tree. It's Machu two. Okay. Go ahead. What, what Machu two um verse eight. Verse eight. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, "Go and search diligently." For the young child and when ye have found him bring me word again that i may come and worship him also now we go down to verse 11 and when they were come into the house that's the the wise men they saw the young child with mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and more he was worshipped as a baby okay great so why should i believe matthew man this is what i was afraid of you know you <laughs> see um you ask for text right you ask for okay you ask for proof right and then you you're gonna question no i'm asking the writing. for i'm asking for no so let me i can give you a clarify. ton of evidence why you should believe Hang on. I, this is what I'm asking for. And just follow me along here. I'm asking for the reasoning as to why you believe what you believe. Right. So now you have a reference in that because this is the train of thought that you need to take with anything. Right. Because I can have a book of potato and the book of potato says, no, he wasn't worshipped. Right. And you have read you have the book of Matthew and the book of Matthew says, yes, he was worshipped. Right. So I'm trying to find the threads that you're making and how you drew to your conclusion that this is, in fact, true. So now that the book states that he was worshipped, we have to now explore the validity of this particular book, right? So let's go ahead and explore that. So the next phase is why is this so further justify or further strengthen your position? And why do you believe what Matthew said to be true? Who was Matthew? Uh, how do we know that Matthew authored this stuff and all that other jazz just down the spiel of stuff that you kind of don't want to talk about, but it's very critical. So why do you no, believe no. what Matthew said? No, not that I don't want to talk about it because um, what I was hoping that we'd go back to establish John 17, but now you brought up the writer. That's okay with me. I'll talk about it. Hey, look, man, I was just Machu is as inspired as John. I, I want okay. to he was John a tax collector. Can I, can I quickly interject here? So you mentioned about Jesus having glory before the world began. Am I right? When Jesus, according to you, Jesus was fully God, am I right? When he was on earth during his mission. Correct. Right. Yeah. Do you know of any God Correct. who is glory less? And he asks 
his God for glory. Do you know any such God? A glory-less God. Because in John 17, he's praying. His prayer starts with asking for glory. Yes? Are you with me, William? There's just a massive delay. In Shall the I bring up John 17? Down. Has he got an issue with the uh, uh, I don't audio? know. Can you hear? Are you able to hear Hashem? Yeah, the stream is just really delayed for him. No, not completely. I'm, I'm barely hearing him. Okay, so let me read this passage to you. In John 17, when he says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that he may glorify you. Yeah? What is he asking for here? He's asking to glorify your son. Is Jesus asking for glory from his father, who is his God? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you know? Do God you know any son God who does, asking for glory do you know, from God the Father? Yeah. According to you, is the Son God? Is the Son one hundred percent? Do you know of God without glory? Do you know of any God who doesn't have glory that He has to pray for it? At any time, by the way. At any, yeah, any time. time. Can God be without His glory? A glory-less God. Can there be such an entity who is actually God but without glory? A true God. Can a true God be without glory? I don't know if he's hearing me or not. There's just a really good delay. There's probably like a seven second I, I'm delay. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Okay. So he's asking you if God can be without his glory at any time. Do you know of any single God that can be without glory at any single time? That's impossible. Great. Okay. So let me rephrase that question. During his ministry, when Jesus is praying for glory, did he have glory or did he not have glory? Which one was it? Was he with glory or without glory? In his human nature, he was a man. So he did not have that glory in his human nature. But you is said he's fully nature? God. You said he's fully God. I'm not asking you. Did you get my response? He, yeah, we got the response. He he's telling you that you said that he's fully God, okay. and what we're trying to cut we're trying to cut through the fat here. Yeah. In in the in the point that you will turn on and turn off when it befits whatever your narrative is. That's the issue. And you have no, uh, you have no basis, uh, and you have no evidence on when he's actually flipping the nature on and off. That's the problem. Actually, let me just rephrase no, that question no, uh, so it narrows it down. I, I, let I me think... narrow it down even further. I'm not asking you what had glory, whether it's human nature or his divine nature. I'm asking you who had glory. Did the Son have glory? I'm not asking if his natures had glory. Yes. Did the son, according to you, who is fully God and fully man, did he have the divine glory or was he without the divine glory? You're saying that I am switching on and off. Now you have to understand that Jesus Christ is one human being like us. However different because he was not just human, he was both human and divine at the same time. Whenever there seems to be a deficient of his godlike characteristics, it's because his human nature was in focus. There are other times when his divine nature was displayed. When he said, I and my father are one, that was a claim of blasphemy. And one of the definitions for blasphemy is for a mere human to claim to be God. Another definition of blasphemy is for a human to say he has power to forgive sins. Jesus made that claim as well. So it's not but switching on and off. You're trying to the claim, say the claim of that blasphemy. Jesus, the William, the claim, of, the, claim of blasphemy the claim of blasphemy was made by the Jews, not by Jesus. Right, exactly. Yeah, you you you're not understanding what your scripture is telling you. No, 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 
oh no, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. I am trying to establish that his divine nature was in focus when he was accused of blasphemy because the Jews knew what blasphemy is. So when he said, I will forgive sins, I have power on earth to forgive sins, they understood that only God could make that claim. Hence, they accused him of blasphemy. If Jesus had the power so to forgive not, sins, I'm not saying William, Jesus blasphemy. William, wait, Jesus wait a minute. Blaspheme. If Jesus had the power to forgive sins, why did he need to die on the cross? I just love your narrative, man. When you go back to the Garden of Eden, when God created Adam and Eve and they sinned, God established the system of sacrifices to save man. That is why Hebrews says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. That was Jesus not during the time of Adam. Said it. William, you're mixing up everything. My the shedding of the shedding friend. of blood for for the for oh, the repentance of sin. You know this my this friend. is a problem. My this delay, friend. honestly, you know we are literally talking over each other. William, listen. Allow me. Allow me. The, the covenant, the covenant of sin remission, okay, by blood, was not in the time of Adam. Was not even in the time of Abraham. According to your Bible, it is in the time of Moses, a long time after Adam and Abraham. But, but but you haven't answered the first question, which I'm sure you understood. I'm asking you, can someone who's fully God be without a divine glory that he had to actually pray for it in John 17, 1? Again, I'm saying, if Jesus is fully man, then his human nature would not have that glory. Hence, his prayer to God if father for it why are you assuming it is the human nature that deserves the divine glory his divine nature is obvious that already has the glory and he explained so, it in john 17 5 that okay, i have this so, glory with the father no no no, no. before you go to john 17 5 i want to take you back to john 17 1 which glory is jesus praying for a divine glory or a human glory My friend, can Please Jesus answer. pray for some? I'm answering with a question, but the question is coming. No, in no, the, no. The answer is you need coming to answer question. the question because I've asked you this several times now. I, I will answer. If Please Jesus, do. in his divine nature, has inherent glory, he cannot pray for that what he already has i'm asking you which His glory is he which which glory is he praying for the divine glory or a human glory which glory is he praying for in john divine 17, glory 1. as a human okay so he's yes, praying for yes, the divine glory yes. when the when you're saying the human doesn't have a divine glory why would jesus be praying for a divine glory as a man he is praying for his divine glory as a man to testify that he is the son of God sent by God the Father to save humanity. When you read verse 2, oh, the honestly, issue of eternal oh, life oh, comes oh, into focus. You are debating the question for a reason yeah, because you you're know. Missing a point. Let me help him out. You know, no, no, he knows exactly what Let I'm me asking. Help him out. I'm going to throw him a bone because I'm the nice guy. Hashem is <laughs> so mean. Okay, here's the thing. What, here's the point that you're missing, William. If he was divine, if he was truly divine, he would never have to pray for glory. If he's praying as a human being, then it has no impact on his prayer or on his recollection or on his status as a divine being. So you're 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 stuck between a rock and a hard place. Absolutely. That's the issue, man. It's it's a divine being would never have to pray for it. And if it's and a, a human, human asking to be glorified, a that's human will I, never oh, ask for a divine glory. Right. I, that's why I asked you the question: Can anybody else, or can anything else, be magnified, honored, or any other definition that you gave me according to your lexicon? You gave me the definition of magnification, honoring, elevation, and I think there was a fourth that I'm just missing. So the point is that if a human being can be elevated and if a human being can be given glory, then he's just given glory by God, which is fine.
There's no issue with that. But the second that you cross over to a divine being, which is what you need in order for your doctrine to work, now you're running into the issue of a divine being lacking glory at any point in time. Yeah. This is the issue. Is it cash 22 for you, William? No, I know you didn't say that. We're trying to help you critically think about that. I didn't say that. That's why I asked you what I asked I you. No, no. Well, here, here is the problem. Here is the issue. Allow me. Allow me. Here is the issue. Here is the issue. You are failing to recognize that Jesus is God, which means that he has a divine nature inherently, which does not need glory, which does not need to be asked or any such thing, because that is understood by virtue of him being God. Now we have to consider the human aspect of it. The human aspect of it. That is okay, what's the point is of what what's you the point guys of are not we are discussing divine glory. We are not talking about human glory. It is all right. It is all proper for him as a human to ask God the Father to glorify him. Yeah, to what kind of glory? Human glory or divine glory? He, that is the question. Which kind of glory is he asking for? The Father, the Father, the Father gives him his human nature, the divine glory. It's that simple, ah, bro. Okay. Now, Hashim, so if now I can you're saying, on wait, the wait a minute, if William, I you're stuck now. You, you, you have actually shot yourself I, in the foot. I I'll tell you why. Sacrifice, okay? When a human, when a human has divine glory, when does a human have divine glory? A human cannot have divine glory unless it's God. We are speaking of divine. Divine is pertaining okay. to God alone. If the God, so if Jesus, the God by given glory of Him wait, being wait, God. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What kind of glory did Jesus receive? Was it was it a human glory or a divine glory? Which kind of glo glory was He praying for in John seventeen one? I think you're asking me the same question over and over. So. I don't because know if you this is the, the last answer yet. will suffice. Okay, no, I, you haven't answered the I, question. That's what I'm I have answered it, but you probably... Okay, Maurice, did you I answer the question? I have answered it already, but I'll do it again. Go on. No. Jesus, in his human capacity, is asking the Father to glorify him in his human capacity. That which the Father would not do if it were any other human. Okay, so which glory was he given? A divine glory? His human nature was given a divine glory. Good. If God gives a human divine glory, is that human God? Absolutely. Good. Let's look at the same chapter. John 17. I want you to focus on this passage. Let me just share the screen so everyone can see it. Right. Do you see the highlighted passage? Is John 17 22. Jesus is saying to his disciples, I have given them glory that you gave me. That you may be one I as we just are one. You're so much faster than me. <laughs> because so, if the, I, I want to, okay, I'm gonna let him see where he goes with. It. Yeah, did you did you read Didn't that? I because according to you, honor, yeah, yeah, according I to did. you, glory given by God to Jesus. Then Jesus Himself, in turn, gives the glory, the same glory, which you said was divine, was then given to the believers. In fact, not even disciples, all the believers. Yeah, because according, look at the title here. Jesus prays for all believers. Look at the title up there. Okay. So now the ball is in your court. Tell all us right, if the, all the believers, what, what, now you're believing in millions in one God, not just three in one. Don't be Hindu, carried boy. away with that title, Jesus prays for all believers. Don't be carried away about that. We're, not, carried, we're away. carried away by no. who's he praying for? Yeah? Who was Jesus praying for? No, 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 no. no. Fine, fine, fine. No, I'm saying don't be carried away with that little title you see there. Jesus prays for all believers. Let's work with the verse. Let's work with the verse, okay. all right? Go on. Verse 22. I have given them 
the glory that you give me that they may be one as we are one. Now I go right. back to the fundamental issue. If God the Father is giving Jesus glory, which I said is honor as well, according to the meaning of the word in the Greek, it means that Jesus is giving honor to the disciples, not in the same way as he and the Father are reciprocating glory. That's I not the same them issue glory because that Jesus himself me. would have given the same that. glory. Now you have twisted it. Honor. Jesus would have, have you realized that? Look at look at the gymnastics. The, the word gymnastics. Jesus would have been redundant. It is the same glory. If you read it, if you I have given them the glory that you gave me. Means the Father, you gave me glory. I'm giving the same glory to the believers now. Hashim, Hashim, give me just two seconds. Yeah, go on. William, you told me that it yes. was a divine glory. You told me that it was a divine glory, and you gave me the definition, and you said that's the proof of the divinity because of the glory. And now, when it is shown to you that it's the exact same glory that's being given to the disciples by the by the very thing that you claim is a deity, by the very God that you believe in, astaghfirullah, okay, you you are now taking back what you said and you're using a double standard. It's not okay, man. It's not okay what you're doing. No. No. Okay. You know, no, I not. think we should you, we should you're failing to understand because, because you keep look, you keep you switching the meaning to the word from glory to honor no, when no, it suits you're you. You're failing to understand. You keep switching from man you're to divine when it suits you. This is like a light bulb going on. And off and yeah, I have one more follow up question for him. So let him go. Let, let, let him talk. Let him talk. Give him, give him the floor. We let you speak. Come on. Don't say we didn't let you. You're not allowing me to respond. Okay, respond. Please. Because you, you're not allowing me to respond. Can I, can I respond? Yes. Yeah, now, please. here's my take on verse 22. The glory that exists between Jesus and the Father, how can that be the same glory that? with transfer to the disciples jesus and the says. father have a unique relationship they have a unique relationship that cannot yeah. go beyond jesus and the father to the disciples you are trying to icg it no we, we're not people want to highlight it you I, I have given them the glory that you gave me which glory Muslims did you do it all the time which, every time you see a word you think that which it, glory was jesus given me. By God, according to the divine glory, it does not. Okay. Anyway, okay. this guy will not agree. Even if it stirs him, even if Jesus will come and tell him, he will not agree because he's already made up his mind. It it literally says verbatim. Verbatim, it's telling you. It's not my William, Jesus. We're reading it from his. Well, it's not an. It's not an Isa Jesus, man. We're reading it verbatim. We're not even interpreting the verse. It's telling you exactly the same. So glory. if Jesus is not. If, if Jesus is not in any way divine, can a human being exist prior to the creation of this world? It did not exist. Actually, there's another misunderstanding. Yeah, because exactly. if you look at if you look at the works, and if you look at the verse can five, I finish? Verse please? Five, if verse you look five, at Augustine's works, you know, he exists. actually explains this. Saint Augustine explains this passage. <laughs> about jesus this is about jesus Augustine he's is going to be glorified can you please stop interrupting when i'm talking if G jesus when he was actually given this you know this particular passage is talking about the condition for jesus to be glorified if he completes the work and that is the reason we see in john 17 4 what the condition was what, what was the condition for jesus receiving the glory that he has to finish the works given by the father like a master giving a servant certain works after the work he'll be rewarded similarly jesus will be rewarded with glory not the glory of god but jesus his own glory and honor like you said the term means honor he'll be given that you know why why you are actually confused about this i'll give you another passage from philippians another favorite passage of the trinitarians in philippians 2 what is the favorite passage i'm talking about Philippians 2, remember? Okay, let me bring it up. So, so it'll jog your memory. No, can I speak now? Yeah, I'm asking in Philippians 2. Can I speak? 
Yeah, you can speak, of course. I heard your question. I heard your question. Good. What I heard your question. question. Um, Philippians 2, what it means there. So I, I barely got that from you. Okay. So Philippians 2, let's read it. I've highlighted here. Can you see it? So, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God, a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Oh, just one sec. Where did that come from? Okay. So the question is, what did Jesus empty himself of during incarnation? Let me just say one thing before I answer that. Augustine is not inspired. So I heard you mention Augustine, right? So um, I'll, I'll just leave him Hold in the on. Dark. What do you mean He's not, not inspired. inspired. So what? What do you mean not inspired? St. Augustine he says is like the, contrary to scripture. Jesus, one of the greatest church fathers. What do you mean not, not inspired? inspired? Are you better than St. Augustine? I don't care how great he is. I don't care how great. He's not inspired. He's not a canon, why a should canon we, writer. Wh How can he be inspired? Why, why should we care about you? They're not inspired either. Why should we care about you? What do you say? Because, because. What makes you better? Because the Bible is the inspired word of God. All right? The Bible is the inspired word no, no, of God. He, so, St. Augustine was reading the Bible as well, just like you. But, but his interpretation was different to you about John Augustine, 5. Augustine. Augustine can say what he wants. He is fine to say what he wants. Yeah. As long as he's contrary to What did Jesus empty himself of? What did Jesus empty himself of? That's a question. He emptied himself. He emptied himself of his powers of divinity to become a human. That is what he did. Because so he's not fully at no so he's not fully divine if he's emptied me, himself of divinity. No, let, me, let, me, <laughs> let me finish. Divinity is for you, there. Bro but it's not active. Divinity is there, but it's not active. So when he became empty. a man, his on, divinity... Here, when you empty active. yourself of something, then it cannot be there. When you empty yourself that of something, it cannot be there. His divinity was not active when he became a man on his own no. behalf. So okay, everything so he did was... Let me get this straight. You You're guys telling are not me... You're telling me if I were to take this cup of water and empty it, that the water would still be in there, but it's not active. <laughs> Man, God is and not a glass Lord, of I'm water. I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. It is if not I were to empty this it, cup of water, it's an analogy. Yes. It's an analogy. It's an analogy. If I were to empty this cup of water, your analogy yeah. is fine. Your analogy is fine, but with God, your analogy doesn't work. It doesn't come right bro. because if it it's boils down real. to a holy mystery, right? Real and real. it boils down to you just saying real things real. that befit your narrative. So, so here's what's happening. Can You're you read Micah five two for me? Can you read no. Micah five two? No, uh, no. Because I think we are done here. Why? I think we are done here because why if can you, you said empty, if you said emptying no. himself, Micah still means five divinity, two is the divinity of Christ, and it doesn't really make sense. Micah five okay. two is. William, I think John 17, 3 seals the deal. Again, you. can you read my Jesus 5, himself considered the Father to be his God. And God cannot have a God. All right. Anyway, I would like you to leave smiling. The Father is God the Father and Jesus is a man. I am just saying, can you read Micah 5, 2 and we'll close it off there? Can you do that? No, we'll we'll so do please it next time. We'll, we'll do it next time. No Michael, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, William. For the audience. Read it for the, read it for the audience. Just the audience knows my request. My request. Reference. Read it for the audience. Yes. Michael, you give the reference. They'll read it. No problem. If they Come want. On. To. All Come right, on. William. You take care. Read Michael five two, man. That's fine. We don't believe Do you in empty. Want me God. to read it. Do you want me to read it? No, I want you to come next. Time. Do you want me to read it? I said come William. next time. Do you want William. me to read Michael you're, five two? William, your host is being gracious, yeah. man. Just unbelievable. Look. Oh my God. When okay. Let's let's leave it there, You know. If somebody keeps changing terminologies, changing the words in order to make sure everything is hammered into the way he wants it, then there's not much we can do. You know, we gave him clear passages where even the believers were given the same glory as the one Jesus received from his God. I mean, what? Right. How, how much more clear can it be? 
That's why I was trying to exp- I was trying to have him work or massage the idea that glory can be given to prophets, yeah. glory can be given to saints, glory can be given to normal people. You, we have we have stories in the Quran where people are glorified because their their story was mentioned in the Quran. They may not be glorified by name, but they were glorified by the event, right? So yeah. it's like you can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God can glorify whoever he wants to whatever capacity that he wants. And now all of a sudden he's got this false equivocation of uh deification where like that that thing is now divine because it's glorified. And what I was gonna show him was exactly the thing that you pulled up in John 17, 22, where the people were glorified by Jesus in the exact same way that he was glorified by the Father, just like channeled through and now all of a sudden he changed the definition of glorification he's like oh well now no it doesn't fit come on man just be sincere be honest be firm on what you're standing upon it's just like people just don't want to listen they don't want to observe they don't want to think for just a second and it's right there there's no there's no eisegesis on anything we didn't even have to do an exegesis you just had to read the passage i think look if somebody's made up their mind you know they don't want to keep an open mind about things in their own Bible. Uh, there's not much we can do. As Allah says in the Quran, Yahdi man yasha, you know, Allah is the one who gives hidayah. So we passed on the message, it's up to them, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them hidayah. And there's a condition for that, you know, because Allah says in the Quran also that he will not give hidayah to people who who actually are not sincere, those who lie, those who are insincere, you know, these, these people will not get hidayah. There's a clear passage in the Quran about this as well. So if yeah. you it's it's up to you to remain sincere first to yourself and then to others as well.